I'd like us to open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. We're going to read it together. Ephesians 2, 12 to 13. Let's read it together. Ephesians 2, 12 to 13. Let's go. One, two, three. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off were made nigh by the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We thank you for hope. We thank you for privilege. Daddy, we ask you that you open our hearts. We ask you that you open our ears. We ask you that you open our eyes to see, to hear, to perceive all that you have for us today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Please be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. Once again, greetings from pastors. And we thank God for them. That they are, you know, taking a day or two to rest. Praise Jesus. We're happy. Yeah. Praise Jesus. This morning... What I have, and the Spirit is leading me to talk about, is a well-known phrase or word, not only among the Christians, but the whole of the United States of America. I recently had the opportunity to read a book on how the decisions that are made by some of us, some of us means S-O-M-E, affects the sum of us, S-U-M. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a must read for everybody. It is not a Christian literature, but makes you understand why we're here today. How some people make decisions for the total of us and is affecting our generation. Praise the name of the Lord. And in this book, the writer talk about the foundation of the United States of America. They talk about the Constitution. And just like I said, there is something about the Constitution. Some people wrote the Constitution that guides us till now. And when, you know, in the preamble, they say, we, the people. We, the people. You were not there then when they wrote, we, the people. But it still guides us till today. So this morning, we are not looking at the United States of America, but we are looking at we, the people of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We, the people. That is the title of my message this morning. We, the people. We, the people. This is big. It is, glo it is global, yet it is internal. Let's see. Again, Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, where we read. Let's take it from 11 now. It said, wherefore, remember that ye been in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision, the flesh made by hands. We were outcast before. We we're not part of the promise before. But remember, praise the name of the Lord. So today, by the grace of God, we're going to be looking at we the people. I see the topic as so simple, yet it's so powerful. I started, and this topic came to me sometimes ago when I started reading this book. So last week in the Sunday school, we had powerful message 
This morning again, it was like the teacher in the Sunday school. I did not look at the Sunday school, but it looked like the teacher was like preaching everything. I'm like, okay, bro, this is just going to go through everything. And then I get there and I just say, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. And as we read in Ephesians 2 here, Paul explains our status before we were granted the citizenship of the commonwealth of Israel. We were not part of it. But through Christ, we became descendants. We were granted the citizenship. We were called into that family of we, the people. And before our adoption, we see things that Paul tried to explain to us here. He talked about separation, that at the time, you were without Christ. We were separated from Christ at that time. Five things he highlighted in, that, in this particular scripture, in this verse 12. He talked about separation. We were without Christ. The relationship and the love that we, the people, you and I now enjoy or know today in our heart did not exist previously. Praise the name of the Lord. Secondly, if we go forward, he said, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel, we were alien. We're still alien. in verse 12. That's what we're picking five from there, what Paul was showing to us. He said, we were aliens with no connection with the people of God. They called us foreigners. The then Jews, to them were the promise, the belief that was for them alone. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. We were not part, number three, we were not part of God's promise. We were not part of God's promise. And strangers in the covenant of promise. The promise were made to them. The fourth thing, we had no hope. Having no hope, we were without hope. Before you came to Christ, we were without hope. Praise the name of the Lord. And the last one there, it said, we were without God. And we thank God today. We thank God. But still in that verse, in that this particular verse, there is a new identity that was revealed when we go into verse 13. There is a new identity given to us by Christ. He said he called us fellow citizens. But now in Christ Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. In Christ Jesus. You who sometimes were far off and made closer. By what? By the blood. The blood is that thing that makes us unite. We, the people. So when the American people say we, the people, what blinds the United States, the people of, of, of the United States of America? It is the Constitution, the words. But for us Christians, what binds us is the blood. The blood is so thick, it's so powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what binds us, unlike mere words that were written in paper and they still obey it today. But for us, as children of God, as we, the people of God, what binds us is the blood. Though you may be looking, I may be black, I may be white, you may be green, but the blood of Jesus Christ commits us. So when we come together in worship, we do witness to the truth that we are citizens, citizens of the commonwealth of a bigger and wider nation than where we were born. So anytime we come together like this, what we're saying is that we are clear that we are the same thing. Even though you are from the Caribbean, even though I'm from Africa, even though you are from India, anybody, the body of Christ, we are one. But we're the people. Where are we going today? We're the people. We suffer a lot. We suffer among ourselves. We're looking at what is inside. What divides us versus what unites us. Thank God for the new beginning. But what are those things? Some of them were addressed this morning. We're the people. What are we called to do? Why are you here beside me? It's more than to come and to just sing and to go. We are there together to connect, to help one another. We the people. 
We are here, yet to worship. When we worship, we say, Lord, we are together. Together doing what? Together tearing one another down? Praise the name of the Lord. Together playing a, a, a politics in the church? Together doing what? What are we doing? Praise the name of the Lord. We struggle in our community. We see that even, even right now, the church is like the church is fighting. But we need to take care of whatever that is internal so that we can stand against the people of the world that are fighting. And we cannot do a lot. We cannot do much individually. We'll be able to achieve a lot collectively as we the people, we have a voice. That is why some things and some laws are being taken away from us. Praise the name of the Lord. Because inside of us, we're divided. Praise Jesus. What divides us? One of the things that divides the church, that divides you, the people, pride. Pride divides us. You see some people when they are blessed, beyond anybody in the church, you cannot talk to them. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't belong to the school of thought that you should not dress well. Please dress well if the Lord has blessed you. But please, don't be arrogant. Pride is one of the things. Financial blessings, when some people are blessed, some people it is age. Some people just put their age on their head like this. Some people it is their position in the church. Oh, don't you know I'm a deacon? Praise the name of the Lord in the body of Christ. Title. Maybe it is the knowledge of the word of God that divides us. But what we're saying this morning, for a new beginning to start, we the people must take care of this. How about misunderstanding? Misunderstanding and offense. Offense will definitely come. There is no way. Because you were raised differently from how I was raised. Maybe where I'm raised, I can press the toothpaste in the middle. And where you came from, you have to press it from the bottom. I see an habit with my older daughter these days. When the toothpaste is getting a, a, a little bit, uh, uh, um, it's coming to an end, then she will roll it and roll it. And you know the baby thing we put in our ear? Then she will use it to clip it so that the thing doesn't go back. I don't know. So far the paste can come out. That's my own. Offense will come. So if somebody sees her doing that and like, ah, how do they? All oh, these things are small things. Just take the paste and go and brush your teeth and go. Praise the name of the Lord. Offense will find us. But do not be a promoter. We said here last week or maybe two weeks ago. Give benefit of doubt. Somebody may say something. It may not be about you. It may look like you. How about pretending like you did not even hear? And these are the things that divide us. Offense. When we leave the most important thing and then we pursue the things that are not important. And there is no way that things are not coming. Let's say Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? To seven times? 22. Jesus said unto him, I said not unto, I said not unto thee unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Praise the name of the Lord. That is going to be 400 and something if you do the math. For what, sir? 490. How can you, how can somebody offend you 490? You want you, if you are counting them, there is trouble. How can, but like this, sir, how can he, he offend me 400 as if I live in his house? In a day, sir, praise the name of the Lord. How is it possible? So we're not even there. Praise the name of the Lord. That means we're not there. So if mommy should get me or not or offend me, I have to let go. When you look at the relationship of husband and wife, sometimes, oh my God, oh my God, 
Oh my God. The same thing with the people. That is how the blood that unites us. If Bra Hilary hurts me, I should be able to face Bra Hilary and say, Bra Hilary, you did, you did this to me. And if you are the child that they come to you, please, can you listen? With the people. We're so arrogant sometimes. These are the things that divides us. It's like husband and wife. You go to step on one another and you have to forgive yourself. One thing I try to remember or I try to do every time somebody does something. I may mean, I mean, be mad and I say, Lord, I mean, then I may remember. Has this person done something good to me before? When you have that particular thing, that particular factor, you have to use that factor. Use that factor. Or else, your calculation will be wrong all the time. You have to put that in. Always go to that thing that that person has done right before. Stop looking at only the negative. It's like sisters and brothers. Sometimes you see kids, I hate you. I just hate you. Try in the school and come to that brother that he hates. You will see that that sister will tear you into pieces. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? At home, they may be shouting, I just hate you. Excuse me, why are you my sister? I just don't like you. Why are you my sister? Let another person in the school attempt to come against that sister that I hate you. You will see. Praise the name of the Lord. That is how we should be. United, we stand. Divided, we fall. Praise the name of the Lord. All forgiveness. Stay part of what we're talking about. All forgiveness. Because he did that for me, I will not. These are the things that divides with the people. How about doctrines? Doctrines and belief. Some people say, oh, translation. I said it here before. At the time that I had to follow a man, a young boy, in Desta, I was a worker, a cell leader. And every time, as soon as we finish the day when we receive the newcomers, we have to follow them up that same day. Because they, 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 they announced that within 48 hours, somebody will get in touch with them. So I was in charge of Mindy. And I went to see this young man. And he said, I like the church. It's just that Pastor Sam, I was disappointed. Pastor Sam was preaching from the message Bible, or was it Amplified Bible? Some people say it's NIV that don't use it. If you use NIV, you are a non believer. Some people will say, oh, uh, when well, you have to take the Holy Communion, Holy Communion has to be taken standing. Some people say, no, you have to kneel down. It's the thing. And let's leave that alone. All those things are things that divide us. We start fighting on things that doesn't make sense. Praise the name of the Lord. Doctrines that have no basis. Some, somebody can be sick, lying down, and still receive the Holy Communion. What unites us is what you should be focusing on. It should be the most important thing. Sometimes fear divides us. People are afraid of being labeled. They cannot talk in the church because you're part of the people that will shut them down. Oh, when did you come to Christ? Sit down. Sit down. What are we talking about here? Not being accepted. I've known of brothers that live in the fold because of how brothers talk about them. And when I had the opportunity, I had the opportunity of speaking with someone, and she said, Sister Fumi, you don't understand. When they raise prayer points in church, and it's about you, that God should let you live. What kind of prayer are you raising? Are we raising? How can we bring those ones back? The Bible says we should be very careful. Those ones that are already shaking, so that it won't go on, it won't get off. Everybody is at a different level. Expectations and pressure. Still talk about that. So that Fumi should have known better. At least she's been in the redeemed Christian church of God for more than 10 years now. She should have known better. Pressure, expectation. Judging orders. Romans 14, 13. Romans 14, 13. Romans 
14, 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge, judge this rather, rather that, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Don't let them go away. Can you love them? Can you help them stand? All those things are the things, or some of the things that divides we the people. Now, what unites us? What unites the we the people? The love of Christ. Let's see Colossians 3.14 and Galatians 5.13. The love of Christ, Colossians 3.14 and Galatians 5.13. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Above all, whatever it is, love, that unites us. Let's, just, let's look at Galatians 5.13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, serve you one another. Serve your brethren. Yes, we have been called to liberty. Yes, our freedom. We have the freedom. But our freedom comes with responsibility. Comes with caution. Our freedom, our liberty, is for an occasion for us to serve one another. What unites us with the people? Our faith unites us with the people. Our faith unites us. We have the same faith. We have the same belief. Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What unites us? Our hope unites us. Colossians 1 27, 2 Thessalonians 2 16. What unites us? Our hope. We give thanks to God and the Father. Colossians 1 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the what? The hope of glory. This is what concerns us. This is, this is what unites us. This is what blinds us with the people. 2 Thessalonians 2.16 2 Thessalonians 2.16 now, now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. That is what our Father giving us what? Giving us hope. And he also gave us victory over death. When we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 to 22, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 22. What unites us? Victory over death unites us. First Corinthians 15, 20 to 22. But now is Christ risen from the dead and because the first fruits of them that sleep, that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. 22. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We have that victory over death. Praise the name of the Lord. Which unites us. The blood of Jesus unites us. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's so powerful. When we look at Ephesians 2.13, Ephesians 2.13, the blood unites us. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off and made close by the blood of Christ. This is what unites us. The Spirit unites us. The Spirit unites us in Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. The Spirit unites us. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. We have that relationship to say, Abba, Father, Hi, Father, Daddy, the Spirit. You have received the spirit of adoption. The spirit that I receive is the spirit that you receive. Praise the name of the Lord. 
we confess the same Lord as our personal Savior. Yes, my route where I came through may be different. I have a different journey. I have a different story from yours. So the way I'm going to praise God or I'm going to relate may be different from the way you will relate because you came through another route. And so when somebody is taking the mic and is jumping and is doing this and saying, ah, that brother is always too much, sure. Huh? He knows where he's coming from. And yours is to pocket. Oh, you know, praise the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Praise the name of the Lord. We call those who trust fund, you know. There was something that I read or a movie that I watched. You're a trust fund baby. That means everything has always been okay for you. But some people that have been through death and they want to, you know, praise the name of the Lord. They want to testify. They are jumping. So, but look at it. What is it? There is a common factor. You are coming to testify about the goodness of God. Can you leave all those rudiments, all those, all, all those little, little things? Let us see Ephesians 4. We're going to read Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. So therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, and endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and all in you. That is very important. We the people are called to be of the same attitude towards one another. We the people are called to put aside selfish ambitions. Let's say Philippians 2 3. We're called to lose selfish ambition. You have to help your brother. You have to help your sister. The Bishop was talking about how some people are, some people have helped me also in life. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember when there was nothing. And there was this hurricane. That came. The light was taken off. Everywhere was just, it was just in disarray. The light was off. No, no heater. No nothing. I didn't have no money. There was no light. So there's no way you even go to turn on the, the, the heater if it is electric or it's oil or what. Nothing. Everything was down. I remember someone in Texas had sent money to me to buy a space heater. You know that heater that has kerosene? The big one. It's as big and round as this thing. And it goes down like that. You have to open it and put kerosene. Propane, they call it here. And we all, we put that in that living room. And we sleep around it. Well, last story. Praise the name of the Lord. We have stories. And the uh, was talking about, oh, well, Brother Bola. <laughs> Brother Bola has, uh, has left on the streets in America before. At the bus stop. Praise the name of the Lord. And the cop has to come to him. Trying to get him arrested. Can you strengthen your brother? Oh, that's what we're saying this morning. We are called to put aside selfish ambition. See, your world will not affect, I mean, it will not negatively affect your brother. What I'm saying is that you are go, going somewhere, you will get there. Can you help others to, to get on board? It's not going to limit your own. Why that you get more blessing? That's what I'm saying. It's not going to take away from you. There is one that holds back. That one, he ends up me, but there is one that 
scatter it and scatter. If you scatter here, I scatter there. I don't know what Balakwa is going to be tomorrow. Let your seed live behind you. Strive together in one mind. United in spirit. Intent on one purpose. We the people must fight together. The church has been pulled down by so much. Now even within us, we have fake prophets. We have fake people. And then we start fighting. I belong to a group uh, of alumni, and there was a lot of you around there, you know, the, the, the fellowship. And they were talking about the pastor that said they should lift up their phone, and they're going to receive a lot from the spirit. And, oh. Can we stop? And my brothers and sisters were going forth, back and forth on the phone trying to defend, trying to bring down, can you, if you find yourself in a position of leadership, can you stop, can you not do that? Because we are all leaders at a particular level where we find ourselves. And tomorrow I trust that this church, I believe God for a new level, new beginning, we're going to get better than this. We're going to get bigger than this. Can we take care of these little, little things? We must fight together. People are not bringing down the church or don't do it. But because already inside ourselves, we're already having internal issues. So how can we stand as we the people to fight? Defend one another. In the place of prayer, we talked about that this morning. When my brother said, somebody may pray for you. I remember a day at a time, there was a particular time, a, a, a day in the week I would choose to, you know, to pray. Not a day in the week. I say sometimes when I have vacation like that, I just choose to pray for my husband. It was so tough at that time. I would pray that whole day would just be for fasting and praying. And that day I started the day and I wanted to pray and the Holy Spirit told me, he said, you're not going to pray for your husband. Yes, the issue is still there. Leave him. You're going to pray for Pastor Margaret today. I don't know what I prayed for Pastor Margaret to ask me. Because the Holy Spirit did not reveal it to me. I, I just prayed in tongue all through. I could not say a word. I don't know what I'm praying for, Pastor Margaret. Have you been called to do follow instruction that you don't even know the, 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 you know, the details? All I did was to follow the instruction. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for Brother Felix? Praise the name of the Lord. Can you pray? For that brother that you think that the children are not doing okay. And you, the only thing you see is to point out that don't you see those kids all the time? We the people are to love one another. We the people are to run together. We fight together. We defend one another in the place of prayer. Not saying that, oh, is it only Tosi? Every time, today, he comes, uh, somebody took his shoes. Oh, tomorrow, he comes, somebody scratches his car. It's because that boy lives in sin. Judgment. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you please forgive one another? Can we rejoice with one another? Support one another. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.10, we must support ourselves with the people. No, I will beseech you. Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the and in the same judgment. Be of the same mind. Praise the name of the Lord. If you're saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry," that happened to you. Make sure you are truly sorry that thing happened to you. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every way and the sin which doth so easily besets us, and let us run 
with patience the way that is said before us. To two, the ways that is said before us. Looking unto you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us rise up than what divides us. You should be able to say, yes, this is my brother. And when you say, this is my brother, you are my brother indeed. If I offend you, please forgive. If that person, that girl offends you, can you let it go? Can you just drop it? Because of Christ, when you remember what Christ has done for you, can you drop it? We're going to pray this morning that Lord help me to fulfill my mandate, oh God. Help me to know my place in you. He said we have been called for a purpose. We have been called. You are here for your brother, not just only for yourself. If you have been blessed, you have been blessed to bless others. You must be a blessing to others. If you have been encouraged, you have to encourage other people. Whatever has been done to you, it's not just for you to hold it to yourself. It's to make sure that you pass it on. Praise the name of the Lord. Begin to pray. Lord, help me to know my place in you. Help me to know my place in you. Help me. Help us, oh God, as your people, with the people, to know our place in you. To know why you have called us, oh God, out of darkness into your marvelous light. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to pray that God give me the grace to run my race. He said, we have to run the race that is set before us. All those things that easily beset us, all those little, little sins that you look and you judge another person. Is it not because she cannot pray enough that that is happening? Is it not because he's so arrogant that is happening? Sometimes we are quick to say that. But you want to come to God and say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Help me, Lord God, to run my race, O oh God. Father, Lord God, help me to run my grace, O oh God, with love. Help me to run in the mighty name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Help me, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help me to support my brothers. Help me to support my sisters in the mighty mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help me to always remember, oh God, that what unites us, oh God, Father, what unites the body of Christ as a whole, Father, Lord God, what unites us is powerful, is much more than that we divide us. Let us lay aside all that. You're going to ask grace, 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 grace in the name of Jesus. Help me to see my brother and my sister the way you see them in the name of Jesus. Help me to see them like that. Daddy, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We exalt you because we know you have called us for a reason, for a purpose. We are not just to come and play church. Father, we ask this morning, as you have opened our eyes, O oh God, Father, Lord, go to these things, O oh God, that we will not be like the one that look at ourselves in the mirror and then we go away forgetting the manner of person we are forgetting those mandates that you have given to us oh god help us to fulfill our mandates oh god individually and collectively in the name of my lord jesus christ that when my brother falls when my sister falls give me the grace not to trample on them but not to pick them up in love and help them and nurse them back oh god to health in the name of my lord jesus christ we want to pray let us pray for the body of Christ as a whole that everything that is dividing us internally that the Lord will take care of it in the name of Jesus help us Lord God the body of Christ oh God father we the people whatever the Lord God is tearing us apart inside not I'm not referring to this church alone I'm referring to the body of Christ everywhere whatsoever it is that the enemy is using as instrument of division that the Lord God Almighty raise a standard against it that the Lord will help us to walk with him to be able to eradicate it and we're going to pray to god almighty that the lord will keep us to the end you want to pray your that's your last prayer this morning concerning this the lord keep me to the end keep me i will not fall by the wayside I want you to prophesy into your week as you go this week. Begin to speak into your week. What you want to see manifest. It's a new beginning. You want to begin to speak new things. Great and mighty and powerful things. And remember that person. Remember that sister. Remember that brother. Remember them in your place of prayer. Speak to the Lord this morning.
and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give all the glory and all the honor to you. We thank you for today. We exalt you. We thank you for your word. We pray as we go this week. Let grace speak for us. Let grace speak for your children. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, we command a new beginning in their places of work, Father, Lord, and their families. Oh, God, wherever in their finances, oh, God, anywhere that, Lord, we have re reached rock bottom, oh, God. Father, Lord, King of glory, there is a lifting in the name of Jesus Christ. This new beginning, oh, God, Father, Lord, God, will be evident in the whole of the church and in the whole of the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, it will translate into elevation for everyone in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, for those that are feeble, for those that are discouraged, oh God, Father, Lord, there will be a new beginning. It's also for them, oh God. They begin to rise. They begin to run. They begin to fulfill their mandates in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.